Okay, in this video we are doing 1.2 examples part 4 and so we're going to have a little bit more practice with that limit definition. But for this example, the directions say find the limit, then find the largest epsilon, or I'm sorry, find the largest delta greater than 0 such that if this is less than 0 0.01 wherever you have this statement. So basically they're giving you the epsilon and you need to figure out what the delta is, okay? Which is exactly what we did in the previous example. We did all of our side work to figure out what that delta needed to be to start the problem, okay? So, but the first question says find the limit. So I don't know what L is in this particular case. I do have to find it. And there's nothing funny going on with this, so I can find it, um, find the limit just by direct substitution. So if I go here and I direct substitute 5 in for x, I end up with 50 plus 5, which is 55. So this equals 55. This is my c, this is my function, this is my l. Okay, so again, the limit definition tells us we want to show that for this statement here, it implies this statement here. And they have specifically given me an epsilon, 0 0.01. So I'm going to plug in everything to figure out what is it exactly that I'm trying to show. So I'm going to start off with my C, which is 5. Delta I'm trying to find. And my function is 10x plus 5 minus my L, which is 55. So this is what I want to show, okay? Or at least I want to use it to figure out what the delta would be. Now, if you refer to the previous example, all we had to do was the side work to figure out what the delta was. And then we went backwards to go figure out the proof. Well, here it never actually says for me to prove anything. It just says for me to find the delta. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here for this problem is exactly what I did for the side work in example three. So if we start with this statement here and we manipulate it until we get this statement here, um, we can find that delta. Now I don't need to worry about this part of the statement because I have absolute values this value is always going to be positive, which means it's always going to be bigger than zero. Okay, so you don't really need to prove this part of the statement. It's this part that you need to concentrate on. Okay, so we want to make this look like that so that I know what the delta should be. So first thing I'm going to do is combine my like terms. I get negative 50. Then I'm going to factor out my 10 because I do not have a 10 coefficient here. Then I'm going to factor out my Zero point zero one divided by ten is zero point zero zero one. Well, this statement looks a lot like that statement, except now I know what delta has to be. Delta has to be zero point zero one zero one. Or if you write it as a fraction, this is the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths. So this is one. One thousandth. And that is all they wanted for this problem was just to find that delta that belonged with this particular epsilon. 